Today is a new day, and it is a very special day. Your life will never be the same as it is today. We are moving from defeated to empowered. Have you ever felt like you are? Have you been constantly attacked by enemies even during your spiritual journey? The weight of the enemy's shadow is real and his tactics are cunning, but today I will show you that there is a way to stand up and repel every attack from where it comes. I will also come along to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus, so stay tuned till the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer, my dear friends. We cannot just sit back and let the enemy steal our joy. We have faced challenges for so long. We have faced battles from everywhere. Faced with troubles that try to steal our peace and hope, they aim to silence our voices and make us feel less than we are in Christ. But all those end today. We are united in Christ, and we will say no more in Romans 8.37 we are still reminded of all these things. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. We are not just bystanders on this journey. We are brave souls chosen and blessed by God. Ready stand up against anything that tries to push us down, anything that tries to attack us or steal our peace and joy. God has given us the strength and will to resist pay, and we will not let our dreams or our spirit be crushed anymore. Today we stand up, we push back the challenges and we claim our rightful place. We reclaim our rights as rightful dominion over every arrow shot in the darkness. Every chain, every hurt, every lie, every sickness and every obstacle that tries to get in our way, we are sending them back. We are sending them back from where they came to God. On our path beside us and the faith in our hearts, we are moving forward with strength and purpose. We are moving towards victory with unyielding faith and conviction. We, we claim our place as heirs to the kingdom and ambassadors of Christ. So together we say to the enemy, We are here, we are ready, and we are taking back control of humanity. In the name of Jesus we are taking everything back. Enough is enough today. Let's dry our tears and hold our heads high to regain our strength. Let's be ready to face the battles ahead with steadfast determination, knowing that God is on our side. Victory is ours. We are also reminded and reassured by one of my favorite Bible verses, Isaiah 5, 4, 17, which says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue rise up against you in judgment you will condemn this is the inheritance of the servants of God, and their righteousness is from me. So saith the Lord, no weapon formed against us shall utterly fail. It is in this divine assurance that we find our strength and hope to ensure our victory in the face of adversity, whether it be hurtful words from the enemy's traps they have put down our doubts and fears of illness, or whatever it doesn't matter, no weapon is created against you will prosper as we. Move forward to reclaim our rightful place. The first topic I want us to discuss is discerning the shadows, as you will see. I talk a lot about perception, and this is why if we cannot perceive the true nature of these our struggle, we may end up fighting aimlessly. Discernment is not just about recognizing anger, but also about identifying God's movements in our lives. The Holy Spirit is our guide, illuminating dark corners and equipping us with wisdom. Be wise to distinguish between what is of God and what is not. Without the guiding light of the Holy Spirit, we can easily get lost. Therefore, the nature of discernment is not only important for spiritual warfare, but is also fundamental to our daily walk with God. Now, the world is not so simple. It seems I want you to know that behind every visible struggle there is an invisible battle for every visible challenge. There is always a hidden spiritual war, a war that may be invisible, but it is as real as the air we breathe, so we are in a war. We are in a battle, and it is important to distinguish the forces behind our battle. The enemy thrives on creating confusion among themselves. 
practical deceit into seemingly harmless situations trying to divert our focus from God's truth. In Ephesians 6.12, the Bible tells us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, well, against evil spirits in the places of evil. In heaven, this verse emphasizes the fact that our battles go beyond the physical realm, and yet, as believers, we are neither harmed nor informed. The Holy Spirit is always ready to be our guide to lift the veil to reveal the enemy's schemes. This discernment does not come naturally but through a relationship with the Holy Spirit. John 1 6, 13 assures us that the Spirit of truth guides us into all truth. Therefore, our first defense against the enemy's attack is to recognize it, so we must be being connected to the Spirit. We cannot afford to quench or suppress the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we must maintain an uninterrupted connection with the Holy Spirit, while ensuring that we are always in harmony with His guidance and direction at any time our next defense is frequent self-reflection and alertness to situations or emotions that are far from the peace that Christ promised by by honing our spiritual awareness. Will we reduce the likelihood of the enemy leading us astray? This proactive stance not only protects our hearts but also strengthens our bond with God. Next, let's talk about God's battle plan. When we step onto the battlefield, it is essential to understand warfare. The art of war is right. It is good that God has revealed it. The sacred strategies in the scriptures show us the methods to ensure victory. Think of David, a shepherd boy facing the giant Goliath, seeing this not as a mere physical confrontation, but as a spiritual challenge that David declared as recorded in 1 Samuel 17, verse 47. Then all this assembly will know that the Lord does not save us by the sword in battle as lords, and he will give you into our hands. David's victory was not due to his own talent, but because of his connection with God. Strategy after strategy, we see biblical characters exploit God's blueprint from Moses' parting of the Red Sea to Joshua's conquest of Jericho. Every victory is a testament to God's matchless power and the perfection of his plan. As believers, our victory depends not on our strength, but on our strength. Strengthen your alignment with his divine strategy by immersing yourself in God's word. We arm ourselves with a deep understanding of his ways and methods, remembering that our human intellect can only take us so far in achieving true and lasting victory. We must rely on God's wisdom. Now let's Let's look at the story of Jericho in Joshua 6. Instead of using, using conventional methods of warfare, God guided the Israelites to march around the city for seven days, ending with a mighty shout that caused the city walls to collapse. This unique divine strategy depends on obedience and faith, and it demonstrates God's power over things that cannot be remembered. With God, all things are as it may be. Another vivid example is Gideon's battle with the seven judges despite having a large army. Gideon's army was reduced to just 300 men with just trumpets, flasks, and lamps. They defeated the Midianites. This divine strategy was not to demonstrate human power but to magnify God's power and ensure that the credit for victory belonged to him alone. Finally, consider how Esther skillfully interceded for her people as shown in the book of Esther instead of directly confronting the king about Haman's evil plans. Esther used wisdom and sought the face of God through fasting. Her divine strategy involves inviting the king and Haman to two banquets that create the perfect setting to reveal her Jewish identity and this sinister human plot through which this is not done. Only the Jews were saved but also by God's guiding hand and awesome power. Planning is evident in each of these situations. We can see that God's strategies often deviate from man's logic, but they have never failed to accomplish his divine purpose. My friends, this emphasizes the need for us to trust and follow his lead. We must all learn to recognize the voice of God 
and how to recognize when God is talking to us. We do this by relying on the guidance and guidance of the Holy Spirit and by continually setting aside time for prayerful meditation and study of the Word which will help us become more familiar with the voice. And His guidance in our lives let us now move on to the next point armed with the power. To understand that our authority in Christ is the foundation without this awareness we risk becoming we should be passive in our spiritual battles like spiritual doormats that allow the enemy to trample on us. Luke 10 verse 19 is a bold declaration of our authority and dominion. It says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, and nothing can hurt you. This authority is not due to our own righteousness, but is anchored in the name of Jesus and the redeeming power of His blood. The cross is not just an event, but it is a great transfer of authority from darkness to light, but having authority and exercising it are two different things. So how do we exercise this authority in Ephesians 6 verse 11? We are brought into the armor of God, therefore we are to put on truth, righteousness, justice, peace, faith, salvation and salvation and salvation saying that this armor is not a passive defense but an active offensive tool that repels the enemy's advance so stand tall my friends because in christ you are equipped you are empowered and you are placed in power so let's break this down a bit if you lie then it's like you're not wearing protective gear if you're not at peace you've removed part of your armor and if you suspect you're missing a shield Remember that God's armor includes truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation, and you must put on your spiritual armor every day the next time you feel like you are under attack from the enemy. Ask yourself, am I wearing my armor? If you are not, then put on your armor, as this is one of your essential defenses against enemy attacks. Next, let's look at the counterattack of praise. Do you realize that praise is more than just an emotional or physical expression? It is a powerful tool given by God to lift our spirits and declare His greatness, but it is also a formidable weapon in our spiritual arsenal. And the enemy wants for nothing rather than muting ensures that we remain defeated and discouraged, but when we lift our voices and praise the atmosphere changes and the chains are broken. See the story of Paul and C. I. La in prison as seen in Acts 16 verses 25 to 26 bound and seemingly defeated. Paul and Silas chose to praise, and what happened next was a supernatural earthquake shake the prison's foundations and free them. Their praise is not based on their current circumstances, but on their unwavering faith in God's goodness. Let me quickly share a recent experience with you. A few days ago I realized an item I recently purchased was missing. I'm not sure if I misplaced it or accidentally threw it away or maybe I never brought it home in the first place. I searched everywhere imaginable but to no avail. My suffering increased, and I considered simply buying a replacement to ease my frustration. However, even after making that decision, the feeling of insecurity lingered instead of sinking in. I turned to praise singing one of my favorite worship songs as the melody drifted away. My worries about the lost item began to fade away in that moment of worship I felt a nudge from the Holy Spirit guided me to a specific location and behold, there was the missing item. My heart was filled with gratitude and my words of praise enhanced this experience reminding me of the power of praise praise and overcome life's challenges in many ways. Praise is not just a simple act but also an important tactic in countering the enemy's schemes and opening up breakthroughs in our lives. When we focus on praising God instead of listening to our inner voice about personal problems, we are actually choosing the power of faith and worship to face every challenge. Praise is not only a way to glorify God, but also a powerful counterattack against the enemy. When we praise God, we not only receive blessings, but also change our perspective and remember God's power over every situation. In moments of doubt and attack from the enemy, our praise becomes our most powerful weapon. In spiritual warfare, 
Praise is not only a folk tale, but also a terrifying weapon. The Word of God is described as a sword sharper than any sword, not only a defensive tool, but also an offensive weapon, helping us to deal with all forms of attack and temptation from the enemy. Our immediate reflex to resist this word is exactly what Jesus did in the wilderness while facing the temptation of the enemy in Matthew chapter 4. We see every time Satan advances, Jesus responds, It is written, My friends, the same authority is available to us, but to wield this sword. We have to get used to it. We need to get used to it reading and studying God's word on a regular basis. We need to meditate on the word and we can also memorize the scriptures to equip us in every battle. I always find memorizing scripture a challenge, but the fun part is that every time I need to recall a scripture, my spirit faithfully brings it to the front of my mind. My experience is a living testament to John. 1.4.26 says, But the Helper of the Holy Spirit, whom you will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have told you. Consider that sharing testimonies of God's deliverance will strengthen our faith and edify fellow believers. The words are not just information, they are transformational. So arm yourselves, soldiers of Christ, with the word in your heart. You are more than that arming, you are invincible. The next important point we need to look at is that prayer is our war room strategy. If spiritual warfare is a battle, then prayer is our war room. This is where strategies are formed refined and implemented it is the line of communication with commander-in-chief Jesus Christ Daniel. A prophet in a foreign land understands the power of prayer, even in the face of threats and challenges. He was steadfast in prayer as highlighted in Daniel 6 verse 10. His consistent pattern of prayer not only brought personal deliverance but also changed the course of an entire nation like Daniel we must establish and maintain a fervent prayer life. It is a must, but some of us are too lazy or mentally complacent, and some of us need to set our priorities right. We need to change that when some of us want to receive God's blessings or walk in victory, but we shy away from making the effort to invest and show commitment. Indeed, however, receiving the fullness of God is not a one-way affair, but requires our active participation and the unwavering faith that we must have as we diligently seek Him. Only then can we truly experience His full transforming power in our lives. Also, see that prayer is not just about asking, but also about listening in the quiet moments of meditation that we often receive clear guidance and strategic intervention, or prayer on behalf of others, are another important part of our prayers. By standing in the gap, we can resist the enemy's attacks against our communities of loved ones and even nations, whether for sincere, expressed demands, adoring praise of gratitude, or standing in space for others in prayer, is one of our most powerful weapons in spiritual battles. Now this brings us to the next point, which is the siege of fasting. When talking about fasting, many of us think of it as simply fasting. But spiritually, fasting is more than that. It is a declaration of dependence on God. It says, Lord, I do not live by bread alone, but by every word from you. Fasting magnifies our spiritual sensitivity, bringing us closer to your heartbeat. Esther understood the power of fasting in the face of the destruction of her people. She called for a collective fast, as noted in Esther 4, verse 16. This was not a passive act, but a siege of the planet. God breaks down enemy strongholds, and what is the result? A dramatic reversal of the enemy's plans. When we fast, we are not trying to change God's mind, but rather we are manipulating, aligning ourselves with his purpose of fasting. It is not just about what we are giving up, but also what we are gaining. It will clear breakthroughs and spiritual strength if you have never fasted before. You can start with a short fast and consult the Bible for guidance. You can start an 18-hour fast perhaps from 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. the next day. And if you feel ready or haven't led, you can extend the 24-hour fast from 6 p.m. one day. Day to 6 p.m. the next day, if you have health concerns, you should consult your doctor before fasting. 
combine fasting with prayer and you have a combination that can break all chains and our next point is about preventing breakthroughs with thanksgiving after achieving a one-armed victory. Powerful gas ensures the enemy does not regain lost territory. Thanksgiving we need to show our gratitude Psalm 10 verse 4 urges us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise as we acknowledge God's hand in our, our rescue. We institute a sacred memorial that reminds us and even future generations of his faithfulness. At the same time, gratitude realigns our perspective to ensure we do not become complacent or forgetful as believers. It is essential to cultivate a heart of gratitude not only for past victories but also an act of faith for the breakthroughs to come. Remember that an attitude of gratitude not only enriches our personal walk with Christ, but it also strengthens the faith of our community and the final point to consider is taking on the mantle of conqueror in vast context of spiritual warfare. It is important to recognize our true identity. We are not just survivors navigating through battle, but we are conquerors destined for victory. Romans 8 verses 37 confirms that in all of this, we are more than conquerors through the one who loves us. This is not just positive thinking, but a truth rooted in divine assurance as the realization of this truth puts the enemy off balance. He assumes our lack of knowledge and fears that we, we have realized that you know that by fully owning our status as conquerors, we not only hold our ground, but also move forward to capture new territories for the kingdom. Remember that every temporary trial, Every struggle is overshadowed by the promise of eternal victory, no matter how fierce or harsh the battle. The importance of the enemy, the title of conqueror, ensures that your victory always stands warriors of Christ, Christ. Victory was declared for the honor and glory of God. The battle still raged, but the outcome was predetermined. Victory is ours armed with the angry insight of God's word fortified by fasting, prayer, praise, and walking in the robes of the conqueror. We not only stand on defense but also actively advance against the enemy. The question is not whether we will make it through, but whether you will choose to win. The enemy attacks, the choice is yours. Stand firm for the King of Kings marches with you and fights for you in his presence all trials are lessened and all darkness now here flee to all who are within my voice let us come to God in prayer I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can receive all the blessings of this prayer let us pray to our merciful and loving God Heavenly Father Almighty and Eternal God I praise your holy name and I give you all the glory to you King of Kings and Lord of Lords you are the God of all creation, creator of heaven and earth, father in nothingness. You're perfect. I have failed and I humbly ask for your forgiveness for all my sins in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare freedom over my life. I rebuke every chain that binds, every stronghold, every flaming dart sent by the enemy, and I send them back from whence they came. I declare that no weapon brought against me will succeed because I am covered with the blood of Jesus. I ask the blood of Jesus on every corner of my life to protect me from all harm and shield me from every attack against every destructive plan aimed at my life. Lord, deliver me from the snares of the enemy. Deliver me from all accidents and negative incidents. I stand on the authority given to me through Jesus Christ and I declare that every arrow aimed at me and my loved ones becomes powerless in the name of Jesus. I resist every force that seeks to drag me down knowing that with God. Lord, I have victory. You free me from spiritual complacency and guide me to align my priorities according to your will. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Guide me and empower me with the gift of discernment, Lord. Help me to be fully equipped with your armor. I declare that I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ and with you. Every battle is in the name of the power of Jesus that I have overcome. I rebuke every sickness and disease that targets my body, mind and spirit by the stripes of Jesus. I am healed and I declare healing and restoration over every part of my being. 
I stand firm against every attack of the enemy, believing in the power of Jesus to heal and restore me completely. Lord, may your protection surround me and my loved ones like a shield. You give us abundant blessings. Fill our days with joy, peace, and prosperity, prosperity. Father, as I stand in your government, have declared every attack, every plot, and every attempt of the enemy against my loved ones null and void. In the name of Jesus, I command divine reversal of the enemy's schemes, rendering them ineffective and aborted. May you place a protective barrier around us. I declare that the attacks of the enemy against me or my loved ones will come one way and will flee before us in seven ways. Lord, Barry, let every attack against us be turned back and confused by your power and grace so that we are unaffected and, Lord, victorious as you protect us from harm. May our hearts be filled with your peace and may your favor continue to enlighten us to guide our steps, strengthen our faith, and let them become proof of his goodness. Lord, I thank you for every heart humbled in your presence right now. Lord, we seek your mercy and deliverance in the name of Jesus. We declare victory over everything the enemy has taken, reclaiming what has been lost for your glory. Every attack from enemies all become powerless in the name of Jesus for the favor and protection of God upon us. May all voices echo in heaven, break the chains, and declare victory in your precious name yours. Thank God for hearing and answering my prayers. In the power of Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you are blessed by this message, enter the word, amen, in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are upon you now in the name of Jesus. Can you help us reach more people and spread the gospel, you can do this by sharing videos with friends or family members who you know need the blessings of this prayer, and by clicking the like button. And remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos that will bless hearts and lift high in your spirit. We appreciate all of our supporters. You are so blessed to be blessed. Please leave your prayer requests in the comments section so that we can present them before God to bestow blessings and victory upon you. We also invite believers, other people on the YouTube platform and around the world join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see an answer to your prayer request, it that doesn't mean you can't pray. Rest assured that we are actively raising each of your requests to God that are in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance according to God's perfect plan. Keep the faith with us while we pray. To God be all the glory. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Thank you.